Hi there, I'm Madeline Miller and welcome to MCSecrets.com. In the next interview, we'll meet Vince Sorrenti, whose name is a permanent fixture on the international corporate MC stage. Vince started his career as a stand-up comic and then transitioned into the MC domain, making sure to bring his one-liners and comedic timing with him, which has seen him consistently booked for the last 20 years at the top rate of fee. If you want to know what success looks like, then Vince will give you a clear indication of how strategy and humour come together to make an incredible career. Enjoy. How did you get into MC? Um, I didn't really set out to be an MC. I Not think, many people do. No. I, I didn't either. <laughs> no, I, I, look, I do get a lot of MC work these days. I pro probably uh, a quarter to a third of all the gigs I do these days are MC gigs. It came off the back of uh, me being a comic. Mm. And I don't really remember my first MC gig. It just kind of, it seemed like a natural thing to... Um, you know, introduce other people and then run ceremonies and then top and tail things and... Uh, Did anyone teach you to be an MC or...? No, not at all. Yeah. And uh, not only am I not taught, I, I haven't really seen a lot of other MCs, to be honest with you. I, um, apart from, you know, uh, weddings that I've attended and so forth, I've, uh, I've not seen too many professional MCs. Um, which I maybe has allowed me the opportunity of being a bit more unique. I right. think it's, um, I've kind of developed it from first principles if you know what I mean. Right, so how much preparation do you spend emceeing? An MC does need some preparation, I mean even if you've got, even as an act, you know, you know your shtick, you know your room, you know your audience, but uh, an MC needs to be a bit more careful. You've got to be sure you know the people's names and how, do you how, do that? how to say their names. Well I think most MC gigs I do these days come with a briefing session and, um, and there'll be a run sheet and a, or a script well in advance and I'll have had the opportunity of reading that and uh, going through it you know, in, in minutiae. Do I don't have a questionnaire but there are a certain series of questions that I always ask about emceeing. Okay. Um, like what? Uh, well about the physical setup. Uh, that's very important to me as a comic. Right. Um, you know I don't like large distances between myself and the audience. I, I hate the sort of cavernous, uh, you know, dance floor between me and the, and the first person, hello, can you see me? I, um, I like to know how I'm going to be presented on the stage. Um, I prefer to work at a lectern when I'm the MC. I love the lectern. In fact, I've started doing a lot of my comedy from the lectern as What's well. That? It adds a lot of presence. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that, that bit, the, the MC's wagging the, uh, wagging the comic now, like the tail's wagging the dog. A, a lot of how I present as a comic has, rubbed off, has been generated by my work as an MC. So it's, just describe that. Oh, that's interesting. So mm. the presence, you can hold on to the lectern and use it as a... Absolutely. Like, people don't have a lot of idea about how to present comics. You know, sometimes you'll have some room and it's very sort of dysfunctional. There's people all over the place. You haven't got clear sight lines, lights bad, sounds bad, whatever. People just hand you a mic and say, oh, this is, we thought we'd get you a handheld mic so you can mm. roam around the room and be funny. Well, yeah. that's great for the person who you're right in front of, but for 95% of the rest of the audience, it's, it's pretty bad because right. they're either looking at your back or mm. looking at you from a distance and side on or whatever. So um, the MC affords the comic, the MC position affords the comic the, uh, the luxury of focus. Like everyone knows who's talking, the sound is coming from that lectern, yeah, right. that guy up there in the tuxedo is presenting the show, the spotlight on him. So it really is, a, it's an added focus for the performer. That works well for me. And, and notes, how do, you, how do you arrange your notes? I always run by their run sheet, but I will add my notes to their run sheet. Like very often I'm peppering up uh, a run sheet or, or a format with some of my own material. So I put in material that's appropriate to sort of a welcoming to the day or, uh, you know, like I, I've, you know, I've, I've got funny ways of doing the business and where, where the bathrooms are or keep your mobiles off or uh, smokers need to go here. I've got routines for all that sort of stuff. So that, that tends to be at the front of my emceeing performance. Did you write an opening spiel? You know, like oh, here I am at the Master Builders Association Awards Nights. And I always have an opening gag about where they are and who they are. Or uh, what we're doing here, and uh, oh, that's. But I would do that anyway. I would do that if, if I was if I was a comic. So, um, and that's that's tailored for the for the event. 
Always, right. yeah, yeah. Look, I um, look. You never do the same gig twice. I mean, obviously, I have routines that I've been doing for years. But um, as an MC and as a comic who works all the time, like I do, I have to have something new almost every night. I really? mean, oh, absolutely. If you if you see if you see me three or four five times a year, and a lot of high rollers will. Like you'll see me at the AFL Grand Final or at the Red Cross Ball or at the Cancer Council Posh Ball or at the at your work's annual sort of Christmas function. You might see me if you're a if you're a you know if you're a big time CEO or someone like that, you might see Vince Serenity half a dozen times a year. I've got to have something new for you every time. It's critical for me. Yeah. I've, and I, I trade on that. The reason I get a lot of work mm. is because you can see me year after year and I will have an almost completely new act. I do. I say to most comics, if if you can't come up with twenty quality new minutes a year, right. you'll be out of business within about five or six years. How do you do that? Oh, it's easy, mate. By working. I mean, I, I work a lot. Yeah. I do a couple of hundred gigs a year, yeah. which is a lot, and that is the real key to me being a successful comic and, and MC because you're in form and you stay in form. If I don't do a gig for two or three weeks. I, ooh, I go, oh gee, that looks hard. It's a guy on stage. What's he? How, how do they do that? You know, yeah. I, I, I turn back into an audience, or yeah. an audience, an audience member. So, um, That's interesting. I think you've got to stay on the horse. Mm. And I think when you get off the horse, you, you your mind slows down. You're, uh, you know, you you're relying on older rope. You know, you um. You get out of the rhythm, you know. Right. If I'm doing a gig every day... Did you write jokes yourself or just observation? Or are you always thinking of, you know, looking around for things? My shtick is um, topicality. So most of my new stuff... And this is, this is how I know that I'm doing new stuff. And, I, and bear in mind, I've done some gigs... 14 years in a row every year yeah. and they still think wow how does he do wow. it what does he get with new material right. it's amazing. yeah it's amazing. well wow. the only rate the only way i know and they always comment that i've got a completely new act wow. the only way i can assure myself of doing that is by only talking about things that have happened in the last year right and you can't no, obviously that's, that's got to be new you know what i mean it did they hadn't shot bin laden last time i saw you so uh, <laughs> that's got to be a new bit yeah. So, um, and that, that, that's how I guarantee it. So if I'm, if I'm topical, if I'm staying topical, if I'm writing jokes and routines about things that are in the, in the news, yeah. then, you know, you can't go wrong. People think you're a genius if, the, if something happens that so day. So tell us about that process. Do you take yourself away or do you give yourself a day each week? Or, or how, how no, you've you just got to respond to what's going on. And uh, there, some things embed themselves in the... In the in, in, in the audience's psyche more than others. So there are some things that are more communally uh, receptive to sort of being funny, like Olympic Games are great, uh, yeah. elections are great, um, you know, sporting moments are great, the things that people are in the forefront of people's minds, you know. Right. So um, political things are usually pretty good and they, you know, they cover a sort of a national audience as well. Yeah. Um, I tend to steer away from, like, uh, poppy type things like um, like gossipy type things a little bit of that but uh, mainly I like to focus on what's going on in the news and if there's a trend in there even better that'll develop into a bigger routine right. the best way to do all that to, the best way to sort of harness all that and to keep track of all that is to read the letter sections in the newspapers and that that's my real trick <laughs> and don't any of you steal it out there that are watching this but if, you, thought, if right? you go through the daily papers wow. and you read the reader's letters, you will, number one, know what everyone's talking about, mm. right? Mm. Number two, you'll know the point of view that people are looking at that issue from. Yeah. And number three, there are some great lines really? in there. Wow. Very, and I've stolen many of them, believe me. <laughs> so it's a, it's a really good trick. Mm. It just puts you right on the button of what people right. are thinking about. Right. So Vince, from your experience, I know you haven't seen a lot of MCs yourself, but um, what would you say would be the key to being a good MC? My number one rule about being an MC is don't fight the crowd. Okay, now um, you have to be, in many respects, the voice of the crowd. 
I think it's important for the MC, if he wants to get the crowd, if he or she wants to get the crowd on side, is to be their voice. If a speaker is boring or is going on too long or says something inappropriate and you think that that's what the audience is thinking, I feel it's my obligation to say it. You know, I'll make fun of a bad speaker. I don't care if it's the CEO. <laughs> yeah, I will say something about that. Maybe in a very sort of obtuse or sort of gentle way, but the crowd likes to know that you're on their side. Also, it's very important not to fight the crowd in terms of their attention. If they're giving you their attention, it's because they respect you. If they're not giving you your, their attention, it's because they don't respect you. And no amount of hushing or demanding their silence or whatever is going to change that one bit. Now, I've got a really good reputation amongst all the bureaus at being able to manage very large audiences. I regularly do 12, 1,300 people MC events, sometimes with 130 page long scripts that would normally just bore people senseless. And I do these gigs every year because they know that I can hold that crowd. Because when I switch on to be funny, the crowd knows that they need to be quiet or they're going to miss something. And it, it, it's a level of respect. So, so we're talking about um, a sense of uh, a power that you have in yourself. You use your voice a lot, don't you? Your, your voice is really one of the yeah, key things. People say that to me, and I've only just recently been co cognizant of this. I, um, I was at an event recently, and uh, there was a very high-profile TV celebrity who was the MC, uh, and I was a performer. And uh, this MC was just... Look, the, the problem with a lot of uh, TV personalities is that they're used to talking down the barrel of a camera and not looking at anyone and not really caring whether they're, they're listening or not. They, really, they don't need to. They don't project either. Then the crowd was just... Uh, she... She... He or she <laughs> may not have even been on stage. I mean, that's how much... Uh, they just weren't even looking at the stage. Mm. Now, I actually jumped up halfway through her presentation and asked the crowd to be... And they just... Everyone just shut up. And honestly, you could have heard a pin drop in the room and then reintroduced her to carry on. And it was just... I don't know. And she, she reckons it is actually my voice. There's something about the way I speak. And it's a very... Look, it's nothing I've put on. I'm just as... I, I, you know, I, I, it's a variety. It, the, the vocal variety. That you I, the loud no, and soft. And maybe. I don't know. I don't, okay. I've never, I've never yeah. given it a, a, a moment's thought, to be honest with you. I just... But I do... I, I do try and be one with the crowd. Mm. I try and reason with them in situations like this. I, do you do a warm-up or anything before you go on? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I stand up. <laughs> I get out of my chair. That's my warm-up. No, I, I, it's, it's, as I say, I'm, a, I'm very, um, very unanalytical about this. Mm. I'm, I've, there's, there's nothing I've sort of even thought so about. To be, I've never even spoken though. about it, to be honest with you. Right. Yeah. See, I come from a discipline actors... Uh, you know, where we're all very just got to be there by six o'clock, warm up for an hour before, yeah. you know, da, 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 you know. No. So, no. oh, look, I, I've had situations that I probably would have benefited from a bit of warm up. You know, it's not all uh, not all beer and skittles sometimes. So, yeah. Yeah. I had a function the other night, um, <clears throat> which no amount of preparation would have uh, assisted. It was this, it was an extremely long and boring script. Wow where the MC had to read out in minutia like details of these award winners who were accepting these awards on behalf of the so-and-so federation. And uh, they'd gotten to write these, um, these acceptance uh, paragraphs themselves, so some of them were very long. You had to read them out? I, mate, they were long. I mean, it was. I, I, I read. I read for no less than two hours on stage, out of a sort of three and a half hour MC call, and um, trying to keep that entertaining and trying to keep that sort of. Well, there's always something in there that you can make fun of, and even the fact that it's long and boring can be funny you know like if you thought you know if you want to download a copy of this speech good luck to yours whatever you know I, I just tried to keep it as light as I could and sometimes disappeared into sort of the uh, into the ridiculous detail of what was being said in, in, in a comical way 
but that was a real challenge. I mean, no amount of preparation could have uh, made that any easier. Right. You've got to be a good reader. Right. Uh, I think you've got to have the ability. I think so. Mm. I think so. How do you do that? Look, I don't read a lot. Of, I love reading, but you have I, glasses? Um, I do not need them on stage. Okay. I'm not that bad yet. It's only a matter of time, I can assure you. But uh, no, I'm still hanging in there. Okay. Actually, my little boy, my little three-year-old, punched me in the eye accidentally, and because um, I was going quite blind before that, and he but he changed the shape of my cornea, and I can now see. It's unbelievable. He took a chunk out of my eye, and when it cured, it changed the shape. But I can, I'm able to see again. So uh, I might get him to I punch the see, other. I can see. I might get him to punch the other one if I get any worse. <laughs> and, and besides being a good sight, uh, sight reader, thinking on your feet, right? So how do you develop this? ability to think on your feet is just work 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 I mean you can't go to a course you've got to be in the moment you know it's and look sometimes I'm good at it and sometimes I'm not good at it but I, I think if you as an MC I think if you say to yourself oh, I am the eyes and ears of the audience mm. and I just exaggerate what they see and hear right. and you'll have them every time right. seriously if they think that Bob from marketing has got a ridiculous bow tie on. Well, then you know it's worth saying that. You know, yeah. it's a yeah. But there's a fine line. It is a fine line, and I'm not there to sort of. Um, but sometimes it it also helps, even with the most conservative corporation. It helps their image if it's to be seen amongst the audience at large that they can have a laugh at themselves. Mm. Like there's, there's a routine I do about, uh, I, I sort of give my rules about business and I, I say that's what's built this company and it's, it's all about them ripping everyone off. And then some people just go, oh my God, <laughs> he's saying that we're all rip off artists. But you know, they're all laughing by the end of it and I think it shows a lot of maturity that a company would sort of laugh at itself like that. And I, I actually think it elevates their esteem amongst their customers. Have you ever done a hoax? No. No, no. It's too hard for me because people know my face. That's but right. uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah I, hoaxers. I love hoaxers. Too, I've, I actually, the great Campbell McConus, who, who was one of the best, I mm. thought. Mm. I've actually sat on a panel with him in a debate and not even realised it was him. He had some beard on. He was some American uh, psychiatrist who was out here and uh, and wasn't the lead. I went, "Is that you?" I couldn't believe it. I'd sat next to him for an hour having this uh, conversation. Right. Now they're good. The master of disguise. He yeah. really was, yeah. and voices too. But that's that fine line again, you know. And I know that Ron, my mentor, has has not used speakers and MCs because they've they've gone over the line. You and I know one, but I'm not going to mention their name. But you know, he was never used again by by the bureaus because he just overstepped the marks. So, yeah. Um, yeah. How do you do that? Yeah. Yes. Look, that's that's there's there's no right or wrong answer to that. Mm. I don't know. I mean, you've just got to be able to judge it. Right. You know, you've just got to be able to know in your head that that's going too far or that mm. that's okay. Do I, you sit I, down and I, watch other other comic kind of shows. And no, like that? Right. no. Mm. I find you're far better off not seeing what other people are doing. Mm. Far better off. Mm. Comics or MCs. I I you know I'm not not that I get a lot of time to. So See, you've, you've never done any training or anything like that? Or? Not at all. I'm an architect. <laughs> That's right, you're an architect. Yeah, That's right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I did uni reviews and so right. forth, and uh, we used to do all we used to do all the breathing exercises and the warm-ups and that sort of thing. Like, that was like a, you know, a bit of an acting school, the re review time. There were a lot of old actors who would, who would uh, you know, we'd rope in to give us all that... Um, all that insight and all those tips, right. but, uh, but actors are right into being in the moment. You oh yeah, before, yeah. So. Oh, actors are good improvers, improvisational mm. artists. Yeah. So it, it's a balance of improvisation and all those one-liners you've got in your head, right? It is. I think uh, improv comes a lot into it as an MC. You know, you've really um, sometimes when you're MC, there's no time for your act. There's no time for one-liners or your or, or, or little bits and routines. There's um, You've basically only got enough time to get through the script and uh, and but you and react to what's going spiel, on. Right? You're always on no, the not always. No? no, not always. I mean, look, I've got I've got a million spiels. I've got spiels for 
coming back after the main course or right. throwing to a dessert break or whatever, I can do little bits about all of that. I mean, it's uh, I, you do so many of them, you, you pick up little things along the way. But you write uh, them down so you won't... Never. I never write anything down. I firmly believe that comedy and emceeing is a spoken art. If you write something down, you give it a final form. If you've got an idea in your head, that's something that you can develop each time you go on and it's always new, it's always fresh, it's always coming from you directly. Don't analyse it. Don't overanalyse it. If you've written something down, that's it. That's its final form. It's never going to get any better. It's strange. But after a while, you just start reading it out of your head. You might as well put a record on. It's like, oh, here's a routine I've been doing for 23 years. And then so-and-so says, and he says, it's just it's boring. So we're not going to see Vince Serrini's greatest hits then? Never. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thank you very much, Vince. That's been terrific. Yeah, it's really been a pleasure, wonderful Peter. Wonderful insights there. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.